Hi guys, I'm back again today with this continuation, the second part to the evidence of Allah's Ulu. Well, um, yeah, we're gonna go straight right into the video. We were at the principles, um, I believe, right? Yeah, so I think we're in number three, so let's get it. Yes, that's very clear. This now leads us into the third issue that I want to mention very, very oh, quickly. And the third issue. issue is, follows on from the second one, which is what, therefore, are, how can we summarize the principles of Ahl sunnah in speaking about Allah? This now follows on from the second point. And so this we do by summarizing what has been mentioned from by Ibn Taymiyyah, from Imam Ahmed and others, which is our principle in speaking about Allah Azawajal. It is an use of Allah, an use of Allah, بِمَا وَصَفَ بِهِ نَفْسَهِ أَوْ وَصَفَهُ بِهِ رَسُولُهُ وَلَا يُتَجَاوَزُ الْقُرْآنِ وَلَا يُتَجَاوَزُ الْقُرْآنِ وَالْحَدِيثِ It's said by Imam Ahmed that we describe Allah with whatever he described himself with. This makes perfect sense from the first two principles, right? First principle, Allah has obligated upon us to come to know him by way of revelation, not by way of reason. And the second principle, Allah is most knowledgeable, most desirous of guidance, and most eloquent, and likewise his messenger. It therefore follows naturally that this has to be the methodology. There's no other way. So the principle is that Allah is described with whatever he described he himself, himself, and with what his messenger described him, and we do not go beyond the Quran and the Hadith. And there are many, many other statements from uh, the Salaf, uh, from the imams of the salaf which have a similar uh, you know a similar meaning so again because of shortage of time and there's like too much material uh, you can refer back and you can find these particular statements but i want to just mention three statements from some of the fuqaha why to make it clear to those who oppose us from the jahmiya ash'ariya mu'tazila that this is what the fuqaha like uh, you know the, the abu hanifa his students and likewise imam malik and his students, likewise as Shafi'i and his students and Ahmed bin Hanbal, the students, that this is exactly what they were upon. Uh, this was agreed upon by all of the jurists. So from those statements is uh, Muhammad bin, bin al-Hassan al-Shaybani, rahimahullah, he's a companion of Abu Hanifa, and he said, اتفق الفقهاء كلهم من المشرق إلى المغرب على الإيمان بالقرآن والأحاديث التي جاء بها الثقات عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في صفة الرب عز وجل in غير تفسير ولا وصف ولا تشبيه فمن فسر شيئا من ذلك فقد خرج مما كان عليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وفارق الجماعة فإنهم لم يصفوا ولم يفسروا ولكن أفتوا بما في الكتاب والسنة ثم سكتوا فمن قال بقول جحم فقد فارق الجماعة لأنه قد وصفه بصفة لا شيء So this is very clear and apparent He said all of the فقهاء so remember, he is early first century, early first century. From the east and to the west, they are agreed upon having Iman in the Quran, the Hadith, which the trustworthy ones have narrated from the Messenger of Allah in description of the Lord, Azza wa Jal, without making, you know, novel explanations, without any additional uh, description, without resemblance. So anyone who comes today and starts explaining, this is what the Jahmi were doing, giving new interpretations, making ta'wil, inventing things, then this person has departed from what the Messenger was upon and he's abandoned the jama'ah because they did not describe from themselves nor did they bring explanations from, them, from, from themselves. But they gave verdicts on account of what is in the kitab and the sunnah, then they remain silent. So anyone who speaks with the saying of Jahm bin Safwan, then he has separated from the jama'ah because Jahm described Allah with a description that amounts to nothing. Mm. Right? He described with a description that amounts to nothing. Likewise from Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala and most of the Ash'aris who came after, they, they were Shafi'is in fiqh. Right? Uh, and, and you know, they ascribed to a Shafi'i but he's not upon their creed. He's not upon their creed. So he said, as is related from him, he was asked a question about the uh, sifat. He said, "Amantu bi kalam Allah, ala murad Allah, wa amantu bi kalam Rasulillah, ala murad Rasulillah sallallahu 
I believe in the speech of Allah upon the intent of Allah, how Allah intended it. And I believe in the speech of the Messenger of Allah upon the intent of the Messenger of Allah. Why did he make this statement? It is because there were Jahmiyyah, Bishr al-Marisi and Hafs and other people who were there and they were making interpretations, giving explanations from themselves other than the one which was in the text. So he made it clear that I believe in these texts upon the intent of Allah Azawajal, which is the meaning that it came with in the clear apparent Arabic language. Likewise, he has a statement when he was asked about the attributes and he said, Lillahi asma'un wa sifatun, la yasa'u ahadan qamat alayhi al-hujja raddaha. Allah has names and attributes and anyone upon whom the proof has been established, meaning by way of the texts, it, there's no room for him to reject them because the Quran was revealed with them and they are authentic from the Messenger of Allah So anyone for in khalafadalik ba'da thubutil hujja alihi fahuwa kafir. Anyone who denies that after the establishment of the proof, then he is a disbeliever. And likewise, from uh, there is Imam Ahmed as well, and uh, there's a statement. Uh, in fact, numerous statements from Imam Ahmed and Nusallimu al-Akhbar kama ja'at. He was asked a question about the various attributes of Allah, uh, about the attributes of seeing Allah in the hereafter, you know, uh, and so on and so forth. And he said, we accept the reports, we submit to them exactly as they have come. So uh, these are just some statements. You know, there are hundreds of other statements which establish the methodology of the people of the Sunnah. We describe Allah with what he described himself and we stick to the text and we don't start inventing explanations and mm -hmm. so on and so forth and we convey the text exactly as they came. Very simple. So all of these three points that are mentioned, they flow into each other, one into the each other. The first one, how is it obligatory to know Allah? This falls into the second one, which is Allah is most knowledgeable of his own self and so on and so forth. And then it follows into the actual methodology that we describe Allah, how he described himself and how his messenger described him. So this was just a general introduction to all of the attributes. Now we come to one of those attributes, which is the ulu of Allah Azawajal. This is Allah's aboveness and Allah's highness above his creation. And Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he says in some nice poetry, he says, Ya qawm, wallahi al-azim, لِقَوْلِنَا أَلْفٌ تَدُلُّ عَلَيْهِ بَلْ أَلْفَانِ he says, O people, by Allah, by Allah the Mighty, for our statement, meaning our statement that Allah is above His creation, there are a thousand meaning proofs that indicate it. Rather, there are two thousand. Aqalan wa naqalan. There are two thousand proofs, either by way of reason or by way of revelation. Ma'asarihil fitratil ula. Alongside. The, the original uncorrupted, the first fitrah, that indicates it as well. وَذَوْقِ حَلَوَةِ الْإِمَانِ And likewise, the, 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 the sweetness of the taste of iman, that indicates it as well. A person who has tasted the sweetness of iman, even that indicates it as well. Then he says, كُلٌّ يَدُلُّ بِأَنَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ فَوْقَ السَّمَاءِ مُبَايُنٌ, مبايون لِلْأَكْوَانِ أو مبايون الأكوان. So which means, all of that indicates that he, the sublime, is above the heaven, separate from his creations. So basically, in the texts of the Quran and the Sunnah, there are over a thousand or two thousand direct and indirect proofs. And likewise, by way of reason, and likewise, by way of fitra, and likewise, even just by way of the sweetness of when a person acquires Iman, that tells him as well that Allah Azawajal is above his creation. So once that is clear, we're now going to look at, in this next section of the talk, we're going to look at a range of evidences. And Ibn al-Qayyim divides them into 20 types. There are 20 different types of evidences, all of which indicate Allah is above his creation. So I'm going to mention maybe six or seven types of them inshallah ta'ala because we have a shortage of time and then we want to move on to looking at you know arguments of reason arguments of fitra and some nice statements from some other salaf as well so i'm going to go through this uh 
I mentioned many, many proofs. <coughs> you need to take the type of proof with a few quick examples, right? So the first type of proof that establish Allah is above His creation, and this is by way of names which are very explicit in indicating that He is above His creation. Right? So these names are very clear in their meanings. There's, there's no argument here. The meanings of these names are such that He is above His creation. So from those names, is first of all, the same to Allah Azawajal, Sabbi Hisma Rabbikal A'la. Glorified be the name of your Lord, Al A'la, who is the Most High. The Most High. And likewise, Wa huwa al Aliyul Azim. At the end of Ayatul Kursi. Wa huwa al Ali. Ali meaning the Most High. Al Aliyul Azim, mighty. The third one is Alimul Ghibi wa Shahada. Al Kabir al Muta'al. Al Kabir al Muta'al. The one who knows the unseen, what is hidden and what is seen. Al Kabir, the great. Al Muta'al, the one who is exalted, the one who is lofty. <coughs> and likewise, the statement of Allah Azawajal, who al awwal, wal akhir, wal zahir, wal batin. So, four names the first and the last, and the zahir, the one who is the uppermost, and al batin, which is the nearmost. And as you know, that the Messenger of Allah he explained the meaning of these um, names, as did. Uh, some of the Sahaba, Al Awal, the one before whom there was none, Al Akhir, after whom there is none, Al Zahir, above whom there is none, and Al Batin. Uh, this, this, uh, the word Al Batin means uh, that Allah is closer, is the closest to everything, meaning with His knowledge, with His knowledge. No one is closer to anything than Allah is closer to that thing, meaning in terms of knowledge, in terms of knowledge, even though He is above. His throne above the seven heavens, above His creation. So the first type of proof, and in fact, in Surah Al-Kahf, where the story is mentioned of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, and where Dhul Qarnain, he builds the barrier, then in, in, in the ayah that follows that, Allah Azawajal, He says, فَمَسْطَعُوا فَمَسْطَعُوا أَنْ يَظْهَرُوا which means that Ya'juj and Ma'juj were not able and Yadharuh. It uses the word Zahara. And then after it says, So they were not able to pass over it, nor were they able to penetrate it, meaning go through this barrier and get on the other side. So basically, he used two descriptions. One is to go over, so one of them, in other words, meaning. That one of the meanings of the word Zahir, Zahara, Zuhur, it means over, above. And the second thing he mentioned was to pass through it. So this is clear that the meaning of the word Zahir has the meaning of Ulu, has the meaning of aboveness. <coughs> so this is the first type of proof, explicit names which have no other meaning. The second type of proof is there are certain attributes of Allah that he's given to himself, which again are very clear and explicit. Min Allahi dhil ma'arij. Min Allahi dhil ma'arij. From Allah who is the owner of the ways of ascent. The ways of ascent. And the ways of ascent obviously means that things rise to him and things, you know, angels descend from him. And there are many other evidences that fall into this category as well. This now is a second type of category which is. Uh, you know, uh, from the sifat of Allah which he described himself with, they indicate his ulu. The third type of proof is where it is explicitly mentioned with the, with, 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 with the, with the harf, with the particle, fawq, above. Explicitly in the Quran and in the sunnah. So from those examples, in Surah Al-An'am, وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ He is Al-Qahir, the compeller, he is above his servants. He is above his servants. And likewise, a statement about the angels, يَخَافُونَ رَبَّهُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ The angels fear their Lord from above them. Meaning their Lord is above them. And they fear, and they fear him. And they do whatever they are 
commanded. And then there are many other statements in the Sunnah and from the Sahaba which mention the word fawq. For example, um, the statement of Zainab radiallahu anha narrated by Anas bin Malik who used to boast that Allah Azza married her to the Prophet Sallallahu as she said, was a wajani Allah Ta'ala min fawqi sab'a samawat. Allah married me to the Messenger of Allah from above the seven heavens. Why? Because this was when the Messenger was commanded to marry the wife of his, uh, what used to be his adopted son. Right? This, uh, the Arabs used to adopt sons and make them into their own sons. And so this was abolished by the Quran and he was ordered to marry Zainab who was the former wife of his adopted son in order to uh, abolish this practice because it was an unjust practice and so because that command came in the Quran then Zainab used to boast to the other wives saying that Allah married me to the Messenger of Islam from above the seven heavens and likewise the judgment of Sa'ad bin Mu'adh against the Yahud who fought against uh, the Messenger of Islam and so they wanted Sa'ad bin Mu'adh to judge them and he judged them according to the Torah because in the Torah it says in Deuteronomy, it says that when you fight an enemy and they do not, you know, they, they, they decide to um, resist, I know and you hold them anything, into siege, and they don't, and they don't, res and, and they don't give up, then when you listening. eventually, uh, after the siege, you, you you take them, then the judgment is that the men amongst them should be killed and the women should be whatever. This is the judgment of the Torah. And I feel like I have no, um, how do you want to call this? I have nothing to add on or to like, yeah, I have nothing to add on to the discussion so far. That's why we are just keeping quiet for now. So they, so Sa'ad and Mu'az judged them according to their own law. They were given justice according to their own law. And this judgment, as he said, uh, Sa'ad bin Mu'az, uh, he, he, uh, the Messiah, the Messiah said to him, to Sa'ad bin Mu'adh, لَقَدْ حَكَمْتَ فِيهِمْ بِحُكْمِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى مِنْ فَوْقِ سَمَوَاتِ That you have indeed judged them with the judgment of Allah from above the seven heavens. Perfect. Now there are many other narrations like this, but you get the point. It's important to understand the type of proof under which many other statements come. So this is the third type of uh, proof, which is the use of the word fawq very very clearly and explicitly keep in mind also the principles we mentioned earlier was the messenger ignorant of this language that he should have been using of the philosophers that he, every time he was using this language uh, was were the sahaba ignorant of this language keep in mind those principles mm -hmm. right because the deen of the jahmiyyah implies that the sahaba were completely ignorant and the messenger was completely ignorant and that what Allah revealed in his book all of it is tajseem and kufr and tashbi and statements of disbelief according to their principles right you have to keep in mind those principles the fourth type of proof is where the verses or the statements clearly mention that Allah is above the heaven using the word fissama fissama and there are many types that come the many examples that come under this so for example as we see in surat al-mulk do you feel secure or safe that he who is above the heaven above the heaven in the next ayah or do you feel secure that he who is above the heaven and the sahaba explained this is referring to allah this is a reference to allah also this word fi there's a question about these particles, huruf al jar. You know, um, do they have their own meanings or do they have no fixed meaning? Right? And the scholars of the language discuss this issue. And they explain that these huruf al jar have like a basic meaning. So, fi has a meaning, ala has a meaning, ina has a meaning, uh, a basic meaning. But then they can also be used in place of each other as well. Right? So fi can be used with the meaning of ala and ila can be mean can also be used with the meaning of ala and so on and so forth. This I'm is clearly saying. known and understood in the language. 
So here when Allah says, He says, Amin to man fissama, it means he who is above the heaven, not in the heaven. What is the evidence for this? The evidence for this is in the Quran itself. For example, Allah Zawajal, he says, uh, with respect to Fir'aun, when Fir'aun was going to crucify those magicians who became believers, he said, Wala usallibannakum fi I'm going to crucify you fi, fi, the trunks of trees. He didn't mean in the trunk, he meant mm. on the trunk. Very clear. Second example is the statement of Allah Azawajal. Qul siru fil ard. Say, travel upon the earth. Even though he said, even though he said fil ard, in the earth. Does it mean dig into the earth and he said siru fil ard. On earth. Which means travel upon, upon the earth. And this is how Sheikh Ibn Thaymeen, rahimahullah, explained this very clearly. He said that this statement, qul siru fil ard, يعني على الأرض وليس معناها أن الإنسان its meaning is not that a man you know he digs under the earth and then as when he's dug a tunnel he then starts walking in the tunnel clearly this is not what is meant and this is clear evidence that it means to travel upon upon the or above the earth another evidence is the statement of the or the hadith يرحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم من في السماء now this is from the hadith Show mercy to those who are fil ard, meaning upon the earth. And Allah will show mercy, and he who is above the heaven will show mercy to you. So again, we see the scholars explain in refutation of the Jahmiyyah, if it meant in the earth, then is Allah saying to us that show mercy to those things which are under the worms the and the... Things which are underneath, you know, underneath the earth. Of course, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. It means those who are above, on the surface of the earth, of people who are around you. This is what it means. And animals which are upon the earth, be merciful to them. That's what it means. So therefore, in the same way, when it says, "Yarhamukum man fi sama," it means Allah is above. You know, He is above uh, the heaven. And also, when the Messenger of Allah, when He said to the leader of the Khawarij. When the Khariji he came and he was unhappy the way that the Messenger of Allah was dis distributing the charity and he, because they wanted a share and he said, Ittaqillah, Ya Muhammad, Ittaqillah, O Muhammad, fear Allah, this is, not, this is not justice. And so the Messenger of Allah, he said to him, Ala ta'amanuni wa ana aminu man fi sama, ya'tini khabru samai sabahan wa masahan. He said, will you not, will, will you not trust me? Whilst I am the one trusted by Allah, how can you not trust me when Allah entrusted me with revelation? And he said, Wa ana aminu man fi sama. I am the trusted one of the one who is above the heaven. And re revelation comes to me in the morning and the evening. And so there are many other statements likewise which bring the word fi sama. In fact, one of them is the famous hadith of the slave girl. You all know this evidence. There was the companion, Mu'awi ibn al-Hakam al-Sulami, and he had a companion, and one day like a, you know, a, a wolf came, and it took one of the sheep, uh, the sheep, and he was, became very angry, and he slapped it on the face, and he felt remorse, and he came to the messenger of the Sallam, and he said, shall I not free her? So the messenger asked him to bring her, because he wanted to test her iman, to see, to, to see if she was a believer. What two questions did he ask? The first was about Al-Ulu and the second was about his messengership. And this means that Iman is based upon these two things. Right? Knowing that your Lord is above the heaven and knowing that this is the messenger of Allah. So he brought her to him. He said to her, Ain Allah, where is Allah? She said, Fis Sama, meaning above the heaven. And then he said, Man Ana. And she said, Anta Rasulullah, you are the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So again, uh, in, in refuting the doubts of the opposers, because they tried to cast doubt about this hadith, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, first of all, the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked this question, Ain Allah. And if this was a corrupt question, a question which opposed our creed, 
right? Then the messenger of Allah would never have asked such a question. But this is not the case. He clearly asked her the question. So how can this be a corrupt, you know, question? First of all. Secondly, he heard her answer. She said, Fissama. And then how could he remain silent and not correct this slave girl if to say Allah is above the heaven was disbelief and tajseem and tashbih and putting Allah in a location and in a place and a direct out? Why did he remain silent? Right? So this clearly is a refutation of those people who try to argue otherwise. Likewise, Imam al darimi Rahimahullah Ta'ala, in his refutation of the Jahmiyyah, he said, This is an evidence, Hada Dalilun, Allah Anna Rajul, Ida Lam Yatlam, Anna Allah has the Jal Fisama, Dunal Ard, Falaysa Bi Mu'min. This is clear evidence that when a man does not know that Allah Zawajal is above the heaven as opposed to the, to the earth, he cannot be a believer. And then he says, Walau kana al amr ala ma yaddai haula is za'ira. If the affair was like what those deviant people claim, meaning the Jahmiyyah, La Ankara Aliha Rasulullah, the Messenger would have criticized her and rejected her answer. Wa'allamaha, walakinaha, alimat bihi, fasaddaqaha, Rasulullah, sallam. However, she, you know, she, she knew it, and the Messenger of Allah, she, he accepted her statement, was shahida laha bil iman bidalik. And he testified to her faith in respect to that. Then we have many other statements from the uh, scholars in refutation of some of the doubts of the people of Falsehood. So this is type number five, Fissama. Type number six is Al-Istiwa. Al-Istiwa. And so Al-Istiwa is something that we could not know except by way of revelation. As for Al-Ulu, this is something we can know by way of Fitra and by way of reason as well. But Al-Istiwa specifically, we have no way of knowing this. Why? Because it is Akhbar, it is Khabar of the Unseen. We, do, we didn't know this. Uh, Allah can informed us that this is what he did, that he made revelation. Istiwa after he created the heavens and the earth. So, seven ayat in the Quran, as you know, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa, uh, thumma istawa ala al-Arsh, meaning after he created the heavens and the earth. And so these are clear evidences uh, from uh, the, the Quran. And the meaning of al-istiwa is al-ulu, meaning Allah is above or raised. And likewise, it means al-irtifa, al-irtifa, al-ulu, al-irtifa, al-sa'ada mean to ascend. And you know, this is again a lengthy discussion. We could also go into some of the doubts of the people of innovation. When a man came in front of Imam Malik, and he'd been delving into this, you know, philosophy and things like that. And he started asking the question, how did Allah make istiwa? What is istiwa? How did Allah make istiwa? Imam Malik treated him as a mubtada. And he asked him to be uh, thrown out. And he said, the al-istiwa ma'loom, istiwa is, is, you know, it is known. And to ask questions about it, it is a bid'ah. And he ordered the man to be expelled. So again, we could go into many, you know, issues. I, I know I paused in the wrong time, but I think i need a um how do you call this like a notebook like a small notebook where i have like all this arabic terminologies with the english meaning because i forget like bidwa i have it in my notes but i have to like flip through to remember so i kind of like have i need a small notebook to do the bit uh reason misguided i think <laughs> i don't know um so yeah, maybe that's something that I'm going to do soon as well because I forget the terminologies and I'm like, what are we talking about again? I only kind of get the context if I have, um, how do you say this? If I have the sentence or the explanation, then I'll know the context to the, the term. But anyways, that's my problem. It was to do with that, but for shortage of time, we want to just quickly move on. And also from the arguments, evidences which are clearly in uh, the Quran and Sunnah, is the fact that things rise to Allah and things descend from Allah. Meaning the angels, righteous actions, uh, things of that nature. There are many evidences like this. So from them, 
Tanzilum min Hakimin Hamid. The Quran was revealed, sent down from Hakim Hamid, the one who is the most wise, the most praiseworthy. Ta'rujul Malaikatu wa Ruha ilayhi fi yawmin kana miqadaruhu khamsina al fasana. The angels and the Ruh, meaning Jibreel, ascend to him on a day whose, whose length is 50,000 years. يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ ثُمَّ يَعْرُجُ إِلَيْهِ That he regulates the affair from the heaven to the earth, then it rises to him. Then Isa a.s. وَمَا قَتُلُوهُ يَقِينًا بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ They did not kill Isa a.s. but rather Allah raised him to himself. يَا عِيسَى إِنِّي مُتُوَفِّيكَ وَرَافِئُكَ إِلَيْهِ Isa, indeed, I will take you, I will take your soul, and I will raise you to myself. إِلَيْهِ يَسْعَدُ الْكَلِمُ الطَّيِّبِ وَالْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحِ يَرْفَعُ To him rises the good speech, meaning كَلِمَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And the righteous action, he raises it. So again, we can now go on and mention many, many other statements about the angels. For example, uh, there are some angels and they come looking for the majalis of dhikr. Right, this is an authentic hadith. And they look for the majalis of dhikr. When they find the majlis, they sit and they sit with the people and you know they, the, their wings extend their wings until there are so many angels that sit that, that the heaven becomes full when they find a gathering of dhikr of Allah being mentioned of ilm being taught and then they sit and then um, what happens is uh, when they leave فَإِذَا تَفَرَّقُوا عَرَجُوا وَسَعَدُوا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ then they start ascending up to the heaven then Allah Zawajal asks them, even though Allah knows best about his servants, he says, where have you come from? And they say, جِئْنَا مِنْ عِنْدِ عِبَادٍ لَكْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُسَبِّحُونَكَ وَيُكَبِّرُونَكَ وَيُحَلِّلُونَكَ وَيُحَمِّدُونَكَ وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ We come from servants of yours, they were glorifying you, uh, declaring your greatness, uh, making tahleel, la ilaha illallah, and praising you and asking you. And there are many other statements like this, uh, that we could mention, uh, but again, uh, we don't want to, uh, we just need to understand the types of evidences and the types of words which have been used to show that Allah has indicated His ulu in His book in so many different ways, so many different types of statements and angles that it is undeniable that this is from His loftiest of attributes, that He is above the creation, above the seven heavens. So now we want to move on. And we want to just mention some statements from the companions, then from the Salaf, then from Ijma, then we want to present some arguments of reason, rational arguments from Imam Ahmed and Ibn Al-Qayyim, and then we want to finish by way of, we want to finish the lesson by way of an argument <coughs> from Fitra insha'Allah ta'ala. So as for the companions, um, so as for the companions, then there are many, um, from them is the statement of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma that he came to Aisha radiallahu anha whilst she was passing away. And he said to her, you are the most beloved of the women of the messenger of Allah sallallahu and he would not love except that which was tayyib. And Allah sent down the declaration of your innocence from above the seven heavens. Meaning that Aisha radiallahu anha was declared to be innocent of the slander of the hypocrites from above the seven heavens because it was revealed in the Quran. So here Ibn Abbas made this statement from above the seven heavens. Likewise, Abu Muj uh, uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu an anhuma, he was alive when the Qadariyya appeared. The Qadariyya were the ones who denied Qadr. And he was alive then. So he said, as is related, uh, in Sharh Usul al Intiqad of Al Lalikai, he said they reject the book. Anyone who denies Al Qadr has denied the Quran. If I was to grab the hair of one of them, I would grab them by the forelock. I Meaning he would grab them by the forelock and grab them by the hair like this. Indeed, Allah the Mighty Majestic was above his throne before he created anything. Then he created the creation. And then he wrote, whatever would happen until the day of judgment, and indeed the people proceed upon an affair that has already <coughs> been concluded. Meaning affirming the Qadr of Allah. So these are two statements 
again, for length of time, it's only by way of illustration. We could give many, many others. Then we have statements from the Salaf. Okay. So before um, we move on, now, we're going to end it here for today. And we're going to do the last part tomorrow. We still, uh, we still have a long list of videos to check out. So, yeah. I'll see you, hopefully, tomorrow. Thank you guys for joining. Bye.